everybody, welcome to the Touch Tennis Show, our last um, of 2012, and we have for you a very special show tonight, all about pizza. No, this is our supper. Um, we have alongside us, we've got uh, Peter Rodgers here. Hello. Simon Reed. Hello. And in the audience, bored because he got here late, is Nick Lester. <laughs> He's just chomping away on some pizza as well. And as always, to my left. Hi, I'm Chris Eaton, how you doing? Mmm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Great timing. Yeah. But am I meant to talk here, or is that meant to be you, Chris? Well, I can, I can, uh, yeah, I can. I'm sure I can jump in. Um, as as usual with the with the show, we normally t- uh, we tend to start off with some what's been going on in the tennis world, but uh, that's extremely limited at uh, at this time of year. Uh, all those guys are out there training as hard as they can in extremely nice places, doing very unpleasant things to themselves. Um, Rashid, you don't need to comment there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Would but, I? Um, yeah, well, you know. Hey, can we talk about Wozniacki and those towels down the top? <laughs> I mean, as a talk, did she not see that? No. She's in Brazil doing a promotional thing, trying to promote um, yeah. the 2020 or something like that. I don't know what they were promoting. Um, something that women play with rackets as well. Um, and mm-hmm. she's playing Mario Sharapova, and she puts towels down her top and down her knickers to imitate Serena. Yeah, I saw she did a Serena impression. I thought that was, she looked awesome. Yeah. Do you reckon she's going to do that sort of surgery in the off-season? <laughs> I'm just a bit worried the next time she plays Serena. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Serena thought it was a laugh. All right. Yeah, Serena had a great sense of humour about it, and it's just there's been some other Muppets, like the Daily Mail, saying, Same. you know, chucking their tuppence worth in about this, that, and the other. I mean, what is she? You know, is she slimmest if she impersonates Vina and just puts heels on? It's ridiculous. She just had a bit of fun, and I think more of the women need to do that because. Do you well, have to I don't mean the surgery. Me. I mean the towels. You know, having fun. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but you know, if you, you feel free to do whichever one you like. Um, not that I have a preference or anything. But uh, um, yeah, I think I think you'll be surprised that from the from the experience that I've had of the of the women's tour and being you know when we play tournaments in the same in the same uh, venues and things like that, the women can get quite uh, catty right. with each other and they're very sort of, it seems to me, especially at the, at the levels that I've been around, that the women don't like practicing each other and they kind of keep themselves to themselves. So I hope that Serena had take that, to, taken that very well. Wozniak was very quick in the presser to go, oh yeah, Serena's a friend and oh, she'll love it and yeah. sort of play it. So it, almost Serena had to say, yeah, yeah, it was funny. Like, because she was sort of, yeah. It'd be it was great. set up for that, basically. It'd be great if she beat her up, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I didn't think it was fun. <laughs> I'm, waiting to, I'm waiting to see the match, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. She might be in for a nasty surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be able to tell a lot by the body language. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can tell a lot by the body. The language is immaterial. Yeah. Um, however, we've also got the awards tonight. I want to talk about. There they are. The awards category are Best Newcomer. We have Best Journeyman Award. We've got an award on Touch Tennis tonight for the um, Most Improved Player or Best Player of 2012. Um, sorry, Most Improved Player. Then we've got the Best Player of 2012. And then we've got the Best Cage Award. Some of the nominations are phenomenal for that. People who, Chris's terminology, put someone in a cage. You want to explain what that means? Yeah, well, basically, um, you know, it's something that uh, that I've tried to do many a time in Touch Tennis and at Real Tennis Court. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty much getting your opponent into a mental place where he sees no no way to escape, where you basically have him have him in a cage everywhere he looks, there's no way out. And uh, Rashid has been trying to uh, trying to put people there for a while. Um, I do it to Rashid regularly on in the pool table, you know. Not on the touch tennis court. Never no, mentally. No, no, Actually never once. On you got me mentally court. once. But the worst person in the world for that is this man Simon Reed. Go on. I played Simon at table tennis and, you know, with my several gifts, I was dominating. <laughs> Beating him around the table, you know, left, And you're right, modesty right. with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And somehow he managed to get to match point. The ego, was fine around, the ego was fine around the table. He was pretty static. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what ego like are you talking about? <laughs> so I saved the match point, obviously. Let's move on now. I saved the match point. And then I was in a match point position. And I saved the match point. He kept on throwing the ball up about a quarter of an inch and just snapping his serve for his left hand is a bit of a pizza job there and he and I said that's a foul serve now just to clarify the rules are the ball must leave your hand by 10 centimetres gets the match point my serve I always throw the ball up about a foot I've been serving like that all my life bang cut the ball clean ace and he just goes foul serve because we played many times before that 
and there's none of this foul serve, and suddenly it, it had appeared in this match, and I just thought, I was just waiting for it, and it just happened to be match point, and I thought, I'm going to hand it. <laughs> it was a beautiful moment. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I was ruined mentally. <laughs> I went into his house, and every single expletive you could imagine came out of my <laughs> mouth for the next hour or two hours. So much so that the next time I played Simon, you lost again. Um, <laughs> We were in the middle of playing. He tried to hook me on a call. And I refused to give it. It's a table tennis call. Yeah. <laughs> how can you do that? It's the table or it yeah. isn't. Well, it's, exactly. <laughs> I clipped the table edge with my forehand and he said, couldn't touch. And, he, and I said, no, I'm sorry. There's no way I'm giving you that. It was in. It's hit the table. He said, no, didn't hear it. So we both left the table in the middle of a match, went and sat inside and finished the rest of our dinner <laughs> and didn't speak about the match again until about two hours later he just started laughing and he said, I don't know any two other people that can do that, can get involved in a match yeah. and just stop and still be friends yeah. um, because we know how bad we are when it comes to competition. Um, talking of competition, um, you've covered some of the, uh, almost all of the major tournaments this year, yes, so I've been being serious for a second. What have been your highlights of 2012? Well, I think for all of us in Britain, you know, Andy winning in, in New York was you know, fantastic. It was something that, above all, you know, the patriotism and everything else that went with it, if you've ever known a guy who deserved to win it more, who put more into it mm -hmm. and was being denied, you know, by the greatest players who've ever played this game. Yeah. You know, it, it, was, it was awful, really, to watch the, the saga go on. And, and I was beginning, I have to say, I don't know about you guys, I was beginning to wonder if it would, it, it would, he would get over the finish line. So yeah. when it happened... It was fantastic. So, so for me, that was probably the great moment. The, the best tournament for me was the Australian Open semi-final and final. Those matches, you know, Djokovic was just you know, ridiculous. Mm. Um, so for me, those matches were perhaps the most memorable. Murray winning in, in New York was, was the best moment. Yeah. A lot of people have put this down to Djokovic's diet, which we know I ascribe to. Um, you know, are you having all this gluten free? Don't you? <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you had this Serbian goat's cheese milk or whatever it is? That, 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 would, be can that would be cannibalism. I can't eat anything <laughs> to do with a goat. I am the greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, oh, I just dropped some more on my pizza, my gluten free pizza. Um, this is really good for you, by the way. You should try it. Um, you reckon Djokovic should come on the show? We can teach him how to eat and improve his diet a little bit. I think you could do anything for him, Rashid. <laughs> I didn't think much of the Australian Open. Um, you didn't think really? much of the Australian Open? And I know it's going out there against what everyone else seems to think out there that have been, you know, watching tennis. Something's season. coming here. I yeah, yeah. Yeah. But a six and a half hour tennis match, and the quality, in my opinion, was nowhere near the quality of Andre Agassi against Roger Federer in 2005 in the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. That was tennis from another planet. What these guys were doing was just. Uh, 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 it was a, the, the final was a slow build I'll give you that mm. I mean, for, actually for the first half of it it, it was almost boring but mm. the second half of it was unbelievable mm. I thought considering it was that deep as in they were going for that long they weren't exactly just patting over the neck in the last hour as in they were still still cranking yeah, yeah yeah as in it was still it was insane to what, particularly because Djokovic you know, is semi with Murray yeah. as in the fact he was still doing that it was it was almost a feat of endurance if anything else okay it probably I didn't find it as entertaining as the Agassi match, but I don't know. I felt I felt it was still unbelievable to watch. You, and what I, you I completely, I, I completely agree. But I, I also, I can definitely see where Rashid's coming from because I feel like, you know, watching, watching Rafa at this year's at this year's Australian Open. And Australian Australian Open was, was slow this year. Mm. Conditions were slow, and it's just a bit of a shame when you watch Rafa who close to undoubtedly has the biggest forehand of all time. You know, the biggest weapon in tennis, pretty much, other than an Isna serve, let's say. And he can't hit winners off it. That's where, yeah. that's where for me, it takes a bit, it takes a bit off the, the spectacle because it turns it into a, a real physical spectacle as opposed to a Guys, I've a just realised what's thing. going on. It's not feeding through. It's going to be going through on YouTube for later, but it's not feeding through to our site. You're going to need to bear with me a second and if you're watching this we will be back and you won't notice the difference.